Good evening. It's now the um, is it? 13th, oh, 13th of April 2016. Exactly one week, about three hours, aren't we? My dad died uh, Wednesday morning, last Wednesday morning. My dad died in the, in the early hours of the morning, sort of thing. Um, yeah, but we haven't been able to bury him yet. We've been waiting for the fucking death certificate or something. He's dead, all right. He's been dead a week. Can't we have the death certificate by now? Why did it take so fucking long to get a fucking death certificate, right? My dad died on Monday, uh, last Wednesday, right? That's a week ago, right? Okay, he's been dead in you know, a week. You know. Well, after a day, it shouldn't. I mean, don't, don't you write a death certificate out when somebody dies? Do you have a photocopying machine? Do you have a thing called a photocopying machine? Surely you write the death certificate out when somebody dies and then you can give a copy to the relatives straight away, couldn't you? Why does it take so much bureaucracy and nonsense to get a fucking death certificate? I think Robert's waiting for the death certificate because we can't bury Dad until we know he's dead, sort of thing. It's stupid, isn't it? Said Rob. Apparently we can't bury Dad until we can prove that he's dead because we need a death certificate to bury our dad, Rob. So I've got three brothers. Well, Jackie died in 2012. Jack is our big sister. Hang on. Jack is our big sister, you see. Why do you think we have five fingers? Why do you have five fingers? Well, Jackie is our big sister. She was born in 1958. That's Jacqueline Ann Bailey. She was born in 1958. and Unfortunately, she died with a blood clot in her brain. She died with a blood clot in her brain in 2012, which was exceedingly painful. And that must have bloody damn near killed Dad. And if, if anything, death to Dad probably mean, mean, means nothing compared to what he went through when Jackie died. What, what Dad and Mum had to go through when Jackie died, because it took about two, two, for about two or three years, Jackie had a blood clot in her brain, right? Our sister, Jackie, my sister Jackie, big sister Jackie, my big sister Jackie, like, she had a blood clot in her brain for about two or three years, and she had blinding fucking headache. Her, her brain exploded every fucking day about two years sort of thing uh, and she died sort of in 2012 very very slowly unfortunately I mean that must have broken my dad and mum's heart that must have I mean that was death for my mum and dad I think I think mum mum and dad sort of like died inside sort of thing you know must have killed them a bit inside but having to watch Jackie fading away like that going through so much pain and being able to do nothing about it they had to watch their firstborn daughter Jackie die that was worse than death, I can, I can assure you of that. That has got to be worse than any death. Having to watch your daughter die. Very, very slowly. I think that is worse than any fucking death, don't you? Actually, my mummy was four months pregnant when um, she got married to my dad. Because, um, um, actually, Jackie was born in December of 1958. December 1958, you see. Um, Dad's birthday was nine months earlier. It was Dad's birthday nine months earlier, in March the 18th. March the 18th, 1958, was my Dad's birthday. Can't be... Oh, 1934. Hang on Mum told me it was yesterday. It was 1934, 44, 54. It was 20... 24. Yeah, 1958, my Dad... Yeah, my Dad was 24 in 1958. It was my Dad's 24th birthday. And I bet you... I bet you my mummy and dad fucked on my dad's birthday, you see. I think that's what happened, you see. Because I think, I think in March, because that's nine months before December, Jackie wasn't born until December, you see. Do you like a jumper? My mum, my mum knitted that. It's falling apart now. It's got bloody holes all over. It's ripped to shreds, but, you know, it's my home. It's comfy, you know. <laughs> my mum knitted this jumper from actually. My mum's very good at knitting. So is my dad, actually. My dad was very good at knitting, too, by the way. My dad used to knit as well. He started knitting just before he died, actually. Anyway, um, Jackie, I mean, Jack, um, what's that? saying? Um, yeah, yeah. So mum mu and dad probably had sex. My mum probably get, um, had sex with my dad on his birthday. It was my dad's 24th birthday, I think, when mum and dad probably fucked. And that's when mum got pregnant. Because, uh, like, um, she, uh, uh, and um, mum, my mummy was only 20 years old, you see. My mummy was only 20 years old. She was just, my mummy was still a child, according to your laws. In 1958, according to your laws, my mum was still a child. She was only 20 years old, you see. Literally, the age of consent to get married 
without your parents' consent. In 1958, you had to be 21. You were, in fact, right up until recently, I think, actually, quite recently, actually, not so long ago. No, it got lowered to 18, I think, in the 70s or something, or sometime in But in 1958, you could not get married without your mummy and daddy's permission until you were 21. In 1958, you were still considered um, a child until you were 21. Until you were 21, you could not make your own decision, apparently. You weren't allowed to get married until you were 21, you see. Anyway, on July the 25th, 1958, was my mum, that's Patricia Gladys Brackenbury, she was at the time. Patricia Gladys Black Brackenbury. That's my mum at the time. Um, yeah, it was her 20, um, 21st birthday on the 25th of July, 1958, you see. And on the 26th of July, 1958, my mum married my daddy. She was four months pregnant with Jackie, you see. My mum was four months pregnant because they couldn't get married. My mum and dad were not allowed to get married because my mum's mother, my, my, my grandmother, my mum's mother, she didn't like my dad, you see. My, my nana, she didn't like my dad because my dad a, a, was a sailor. See, my dad was a sailor, you see. My dad's a sailor. He was a sailor. And, and uh, my nan didn't like my dad, you know, for some reason. He, see, they, they never got on. <laughs> In fact, my nan really didn't like my dad at all very much. And she wouldn't let my mum get married, you see. Even though my mum was pregnant, but my nan wouldn't let them get married. And it was mum's 21st birthday on, on the 25th of July, 1958. And on the 26th of July... Um, 1958, she, they got married, you see. Um, there's a photo of it at Nana Ruthven's house. Um, uh, uh, Nana Ruthven is my, my dad's um, mother. She was Bailey, but she got she remarried. Um, actually, my dad never knew his dad. My dad never had a daddy. It's true. My, my daddy, Donald Stuart Bailey. My daddy's Donald Stuart Bailey. He died last week. But my daddy never had a daddy. He never knew his daddy. And my mum never knew her dad either. So my mummy... Never knew her dad either. My mum didn't know her dad, and, and my dad didn't know that. So they didn't have fathers. My mum and dad never had, had, had you know, dads like. So anyway, yeah, um, um, so anyway, on the 26th of July, because mum was 21, she could make up her own mind then. So in 1958, on the 26th of July, mum and dad got married, you see. Mum and dad got married. Um, uh, uh, Na Nana Ruthven was there, you know, my dad's mother. She she, she loved my mum. My mum and my Nana Ruthven, uh, she... she um, she, 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 uh, well, she's Ruth and she, she remarried. She was Bailey, but then she, she was Mrs. Manana, Manana was Violet Bailey, but then Violet Bailey, um, Manana, um, she married my granddad, you see. I, 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 I did have a great granddad, Sankey. A great granddad, Sankey. Caleb Sankey, actually. Caleb Sankey. Caleb Sankey is my dad's grandfather. Um, my, my, my Nana Ruthven's father. That's right, because it was Violet Sankey. Then she got married and became Bailey, and that's when she had the kids. Uh, um, you know, um, and then then she remarried Alf. She married Alf, who was my granddad, sort of thing. He was my step granddad, actually. I never had a real granddad. I had a real great granddad. I did have a real great granddad, and that was Granddad Sankey. But I didn't know him very well because I was only a baby. I was really only a very very small child. I only, I I have vague memory, but not really clear. Still not really very clear one. So I, I never really knew Granddad Sankey that well. You know, I think I met him once or twice, sort of thing. That's all I can remember, vaguely. Because I was only a little child, sort of thing. Because he died, I think, about 1969, 1970, or something like that. Um, anyway, yeah, um, yeah, he was Caleb Sankey, you see. Caleb Sankey. Anyway, diverse. Um, yeah, so, um, I mean, I mean, um, my, my parents never really knew their dads. But, but um, anyway, my mum and dad got married in, in, in 1958, on the 26th of July. And then on, on the uh, um, 6th, of December, was it sixth of December? Yeah, sixth of December, nineteen fifty-eight. My big sis, our big sister was born. My daddy's firstborn was Jackie. You see, Jackie was the firstborn of our generation. You see, of our blood, of my particular bloodline, and um, Jackie was the firstborn of our generation. She was dad's little girl. She was dad's daughter. I mean, dad's dad's little girl. And and, mom, and dad and Jackie were so fucking close, man. She was daddy's girl. Jackie was always daddy's girl, you know. And it broke my fucking heart. It broke my dad's heart when Jackie died, you know, with a with a blood tumor in uh, two thousand twelve. Anyway, in in nineteen sixty one, 
Um, so, so, so my mum and dad and they got, they got married, and like Jackie was born on the sixth of December, nineteen fifty-eight, and that's Jackie Ann, Jacqueline Ann Bailey. Uh, there was James Keith Bailey. James Keith was James Keith was born in nineteen sixty-one. That's Jim, my big big brother. Jim's my big big brother. He's the first of the boys. Jim's Jim's the first of the boys. He's like the Jack of Clubs, like the Baileys. Jim's the Jack of Clubs, you see. Jim's like the Jack of Clubs. Um. Uh, he was born in 1961. He was Bowie mad. He loved David Bowie, didn't he? Uh, then Robert, Robert, Robert was born in in 1965. Robert's my big brother. You know, he was born Robert Caleb actually. Robert Caleb. So the Caleb, the bloodline Caleb, the same blood you see. The Caleb blood is in the sort. Um, the Sank, the Sankey blood runs through you know all our veins. You know, like, and, and the Caleb Sankey. So that's that will go to Robert. So Robert's the Caleb. You see. Which is funnily enough, because Nana Ruthven died about 20 odd years ago, so I'm out, maybe 30 years ago, I can't remember when. But um, um, Nana Ruthven was Caleb Sankey's uh, daughter. But Robert's daughter is Phoebe. Phoebe is my Nana Ruthven. Phoebe is Violet Ruthven. Phoebe, is, Phoebe my, my niece, she actually is, in fact, actual blood. Blood, sweat and tears. <laughs> How many years does it take? But Phoebe is, in fact, my, um, my dad's mother. My dad's mother, my nana is from my dad's mother. Phoebe is my it, it, Phoebe is my dad's granddaughter, first granddaughter actually. Phoebe is my dad's first granddaughter. Tom was my dad's to, Tom and Daniel. That them um, Tom was born in it. Oh, I'll come to that in a minute. So Tom, Tom, Tom and Daniel are, are Jim's kids, and they were born in. Uh, I think Dan, um, Tom was born in ninety eight and um, no, eighty eight I think, uh, and uh, Dan was born in nineteen ninety when I, In fact, Daniel was born when I was in Australia. And anyway, diverse. Um, anyway, yes, it's a family tree, I think. But anyway, yeah, yeah so Jim's sort of like Jack of Clubs. He's Tom's dad, Tom and Daniel's dad, with, with Diana like. Um, and anyways, there's Robert. Robert, uh, um, she, he, he's Phoebe's dad. You know, Phoebe's like my grandmother, but she's my dad's granddaughter as well. And there's Donald. There's Donald there's, so then there's William. So there's Robert Caleb, sorry. Then, then there's William. I was born in 1966. I am William Joseph Bailey, you see. Um, it's a nice name, it William Joseph Bailey. It runs off your tongue. William Joseph Bailey. William is actually a French name, actually. So William is a French name. Joseph is a Jewish name. And Bailey is a pagan name. Now, pagan is a French name as well. Uh, Bailey is, in fact, a, a French name too as well, by the way. William is a French, um, French name. William the Conqueror. 1066. I was born 900 years after 1066. So I was born 900 after years after 1066. So I was born in 1966. I'm William. That's a French name. Joseph is a Jewish name. Joseph is the dreamer. You know, you've heard of Joseph, the story about Joseph, the dreamer? And Bailey is, in fact, a French name, you see. You've, you've heard of Bailey Castles? You see, when the French, when, when, when the Normans conquered Britain, in 1066, we built Bailey Castles, you see, in Britain. That, the, the name Bailey is French, actually. It ca came over with William the Conqueror, actually, because we built Bailey Castles. Anyway, Donald is my little brother. And Donald was born in 1970, sorry. Donald is my little brother, Donald Stuart Bailey. He was born in 1970. And the funny thing is, that's Donald Stuart Bailey, you see. That is Donald Stuart Bailey. And Donald is Donald Stuart Bailey. My little brother, Don, he's Donald Stuart Bailey, too. Two Donald Stuart Bailey, see. So when one dies, the other takes over. So Don is still the Don of the family, you see. You know, we still have a Don. There's always... You, you know, do you know what a Don is? Don is like the head of the fa Well, the sort of like brains of the family, I suppose. Don is just like the brains of the family sometimes. So quite a lot of time. But Don's a hell of a lot like my dad, actually. They all, we all are in many ways, I suppose. Well, we, we, you see, oh, oh, my, my brothers, like... Um, my brothers and me... I'm sorry, like... Sorry, I'm saying sorry. Jim's the Jack of Clubs. Robert's the Jack of... Diamonds. Robert's like a millionaire. Like Robert's a banker. You know, millionaire sort of um, money man. Robert's got loads of money. Um, he's a millionaire. Anyway, so Robert's like the jack of diamonds. Um, I'm the jack of spades. Like I deal with the dead people. I'm good at digging up graves. So I, I'm the jack of spades. And Donald's the jack of hearts because Donald's all heart. Donald has dad's heart. Most definitely, Donald has dad's heart. He definitely has dad's heart. Donald has dad's heart. He always has had that heart. See, Don Stuart Bailey is my dad, and Don Stuart Bailey is also my little brother. Two separate people, yeah, obviously. But 
But with, the blood flows through us, you see, the blood flows through us all. But Donald is the heart, he's still Jack of Hearts. He's got Dad's heart, Donald has Dad's heart, he's got Dad's emotions. Because Dad is actually a very, Dad, my Dad's always been a really emotional guy, like, really. It doesn't show his emotions a lot. Well, it, it does to me, it is really, but it, it's sort of like, um, he never tells anyone if he's in pain or whatever, he's sort of like, he's very much, uh, I don't know, tight lips sometimes, but yeah, I learned this to be. Um, yeah, but me and my dad, when, we, when I was a kid, me and my dad, we used to, um, my brothers were always out, outside playing football, like when we were children. My, dad, my, my, my dad's an atheist, by the way, so my dad's an atheist, right? He doesn't like religion. I hate religion. My dad hates religion. We, do, we don't believe in this. Because it's funny, because when I was growing up, like, everyone says, Our Father who art in heaven. I was thinking, no, he's not. My dad's on earth. And my dad was in hospital at the time because he had an operation or something. And when I started primary school, they were going, That's, I, I never had any religion at home, really, until um, that I can remember. I can remember vaguely once or twice going to church. And then for some reason, the church kept burning down. I don't know why. I think I went to church, you know, a couple of times when I was a kid. But I think the church kept burning. Kept, but the churches kept burning down. I, I haven't worked out why yet. But anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, sorry, um, out of us. Yeah, but so I never really had much, really, we never really sort of like, had religion when, when we were children. In fact, when, when I was a kid, when I was a little kid, yeah, um, we, I talked, we, took, we did talk about God though, yes, because I, I can remember distinctly quite a lot when we were living in Wood Close actually. I was very, I was very young I think. Me and my brother, well, we, you know, we were all quite young actually, you know. But I, I, was, um, I, I was talking to my mum once, um, and I said, Mum, where is God? And mum said, drink your coffee. So I drank my coffee. This is true, this is very true. I, I asked my mum once, I said, Mum, where is God? And mum said, drink your coffee. So I drank my coffee, right? And my mum said, right. Look in the bottom of your coffee cup. I said, look in the bottom of your coffee mug. So I, I held the mug up to my eyes like. I said, do you see anyone there? And I looked down into my coffee mug. And there was this face. There was, there was this guy at the bottom of my coffee mug. I was distinct. I was, I was, when I was a kid, there was this, this, this face at the bottom of my coffee mug staring, at, staring right back at me. Mum said, there he is. That's God. That's what my mum said. The face at the bottom of my coffee cup, my mum told me. When I was a kid, I asked, I, I, I asked mum, um, you know, where is God? Mum said, drink your coffee, and I drank my coffee. Mum said, look in the bottom of your coffee cup. And I looked in the bottom of my coffee cup, and there's this face staring up at me. And mum said, there is God at the bottom of your coffee cup, quenching your thirst. There to quench your thirst, you might say. I said, maybe there to quench my thirst. No, she said, there, there to quench your thirst. That's as far as religion went in my family, really. Honest to God. That's as far as religion went, really, in our family. We had the King James I Bible. By the way, that's a very good book. It's got some sexy fucking gay shit in that. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. Stay me with flagons, comfort me with apples, for I am sick of love. His left hand is under my, should be under, is under my head, and his right hand doth embrace me. Ah, the voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a roe or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall, showing his face, showing himself through the lattice. My beloved is like a roe or a young heart. His belly is as bright ivory overlaid with sapphires. His thighs as marble. His lips as bed of spices, sweet swelling roses or something. It's a beautiful story. Actually, if you read the King James the first version, there is one beautiful fucking gay love story in it. A fucking beautiful gay love story. It's the Song of Solomon, you see. Solomon was a king. You ever heard of King Solomon? It's a story. It's Solomon's song, told by Solomon. It's, Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. Stay me with flagons, comfort me with apples, for I am sick of love. His left hand should be under my head, and his right hand should embrace me. Ah, the voice of my beloved, behold, 
He cometh leaping upon the mountains, skipping among the lilies. My beloved is like a roe or a young heart. He standeth behind our wall, showing himself full of teeth. Oh, that thou art worked as my brother, that sucked the breasts of my mother. Oh, that thou wert as my brother, that sucked the breasts of my mother. When I should find thee without, I would kiss thee. Yea, I should not be despised. I should welcome thee and bring thee into the, my mother's banqueting house. Or something like that. I can't remember all the words. I can't remember much of it, actually. It's, most of it's in the books. That's why I like, that's why I like books, because like, they keep the words safe when it goes out of my head. Anyway, it's, it's like um, his lips are like sweet-smelling myrrh. And it's got a bit about fisting. It says, um, I put my hand in, I put, I put my hand in my blood by the hole of the door. Um, sorry, my beloved. Sorry, it's, that's it. It's, it's a bit like fisting. You know, when your boyfriend's sticking his hand up your ass. My beloved put in his hand by the hole of the door. So he's putting his hand somewhere by the hole of the door. And my bowels were moved for him. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved was gone. That's in the Bible, by the way, the King James I Bible. It's got a bit about fisting. In the, in the, if, you, if you were to King James I um, Bible, Song of Solomon, in the King James I version of the Bible, it's got a bit about fisting, you know. It's like, my beloved, because wh wh where are your bowels? You see, shit comes out of your ass, doesn't it? Crap comes out of your ass, yeah? And as far as Christians are concerned, crap comes out of your mouth, doesn't it? As far as Christians are concerned, the crap comes out of your mouth. But I'm a pagan, you see. The shit comes out of my ass, you see. I'm a pagan, the shit comes out of my ass. Anyway, and my beloved put in his hand by the hole of the door, and my bowels were moved for him. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had withdrawn himself and was gone. Staying with flagons, covered with apples, I'm sick of love. And it goes on about, you know, his, his right hand being under my head and left hand being around. It's a lovely story, actually, in the King James I Bible. It's quite a lovely gay love story. It's a lovely gay love story. It really is, the Song of Solomon. Anyway, yeah, I'm saying, yeah, so Donald, Donald actually has the heart of Dad. So, like, there's, there's four of us left now, four of the brothers. My mum's still alive. My mum's doing okay. You know, so my mum's quite healthy, can, can, except she, you know, she, she lost her teeth. But, <laughs> But mum, my mum's actually sort of, she's doing okay, you know, she's strong enough. I mean, we've been expect, we've been, we've half expected being dad to be dying on an operating table over the last forty years. We you know the last forty years, dad's had so many fucking heart operations, so many operations, and his bowels and his kidneys, or whatever. It's a wonder he's lived to be eighty-two. It's a wonder he lived to be eighty-two. But we were half expecting him to die on the operating table. You know what I mean? Or we're going to sleep in his bed. You know? I said I could, but, you know, thankfully, he's just sort of like, he just, is, you know, perhaps, you know they did an autopsy. I don't know why they bothered to do an autopsy. He just collapsed and he was dead. I don't know why they needed to do an autopsy, really. The fact is, he he was exhausted and he died, you know. His breath just ran out. But I did have a great day on Tuesday. It was it was a perfect, it, was, it wasn't a perfect day. It was, it was a really good day on Tuesday, last Tuesday. Because I walked through the King, Jay, uh, King George um, playing fields and there was all the kids playing on the swings. It was a lovely summer's day. You know, lovely summer's day. And I straight, came across the field, walked straight up High Valley, straight into the house and sat down and had a good chat with my dad and I talked about the theatre and I told him about the um, Alice in Wonderland I went to see and I was talking to him saying sort of like I started writing a sequel to Alice in Wonderland. I just done a plug hole, which is what I've been trying to do lately and typing it out and all that. And, you know, I had a good long chat with me. You know, we talked about Mum going on holiday house. Her hotel was about 100 miles away from the um, from the airport. And we, you know, basically talked about my teeth. And Dad you know, said, you know, he's, he's lost a few teeth. And we talked about his dental implants and stuff like that. And basically a really nice conversation like we always do, me and my dad. Me and my dad would often have a good chat. We had you know, quite a long conversation, probably about an hour and a half even, I think it might have been, actually. And my dad, well, I say, was having a bit of breathing difficulty, sort of like, you know, he didn't sleep the night before, he couldn't sleep the night before because he found it very hard to breathe overnight, you say. When he was asleep, lying down, he could find it very hard, he was find it very hard to breathe, sort of thing. But anyway, you know, I had a good long chat with my dad, and he was, you know, bright eyed and bushy pr tailed as usual, you know. Obviously, you know, because he lost a little, he, he actually lost a bit of weight, lost, lost went to hospital with, he went to hospital with breathing difficulties in January, I think. 
Uh, uh, and sort of like, so it's, it's been wheezing a lot over the last sort of few months, like. But um, it's kind of like, his whole body was wearing out, man. It was like, the air was sort of, his body was wearing out, so the air was sort of like yeah, leaving, sort of thing. But I mean, I don't see it as death, though. Okay, his body's worn out, and if, yeah, we've got to bury the body. Do we have to wait a week to confirm that he's really dead? Do we have to wait a week to prove that he's dead, sort of thing? Can't we just bury him tomorrow, you know? I mean, the fact is, you know, it's people. a lot of people, I suppose, especially in Christian, they, they, they think, you know, it's goodbye, won't see you again, sort of thing, or something like that. But the way I see it is like, I mean, I, mean, I never, I, 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 my dad was an atheist in a way. But like I said, um, when I was a kid, they kept saying, it, well, I went to school, and I went, I went to how to school, and they kept saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be the name, and saying, no, my father is not in heaven, my father is down here on planet Earth. You know, I never had a God in heaven, I never believed in God up above me. You know, I've never believed in a, in a God up above me, like in heaven. Because I've always been down here, you see, I've always been down here. But I'm not God. I'm I, 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 I'm I'm a dad's one of my dad's sons, you know. Like you know, I'm one of my dad's sons, this sort of thing. There's a third son actually. There's four sons. One daughter, four sons. And four sons are still left here. I'm number three out of four of the sons. But yeah, I'm sort of like the devil because my brothers have all got the kids. You see, my brothers. Donald, actually Donald has, has two kids, Louis and Amelia. And actually Millie is in fact my mother's mother. Millie is in fact my nana Brackenbury, you see. Because my nana Brackenbury died about five years ago and sort of thing. Um, about, no, about ten years ago now, I think. And then Donald has Amelia. Donald and Trace had Amelia, you see. So, I mean, Amelia was like my nana Brackenbury. So, so it's my mum's mother is, is my mum's granddaughter, you see. It's, it's so simple. Blood is so simple. My mum's mother is her granddaughter. My mother's mother is her granddaughter. And, okay, you know, maybe it's sort of like eventually, you know, of old age, if nothing happens, sort of thing. Mum will probably die as well, probably about, hopefully not for a hell of a long time, or probably never, I hope. I hope, for, I hope she'll live forever. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But it's like, Millie, Millie, Millie's my mum's mother. My mum's mum is Millie, my, 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 my niece, my, my mum and dad's, um, second granddaughters, because I've only got two granddaughters. Phoebe, funny thing is, my mum and dad's granddaughters are their parents, are their mothers, you see. My mum and dad never, like I say, my mum and dad never knew their fathers, you see. The strange thing is, Rob, um, Rob uh, Caleb Bailey, Caleb is is Phoebe's father. Caleb was also um, Nana Ruthson's father, sort of thing. Um, so, my dad's mother's father. So, so um, Phoebe is like my dad's mother, and his granddaughter, and Millie is, is my mum's mother and a granddaughter. But I, I'm glad that both of them got to know Dad, because, and, and so did Tom, Thomas. Um, Tom, Thomas is about 27, something like that now, I think. Daniel must be about 25, come up to 26, I think. Yeah, D Daniel's 25, come up to 26. And Louis is 10, I came up to 11, I think, in May, and Phoebe's about 11, I think, and uh, Millie's about 8 or something. I think Millie's about eight. So at least they, they, they did know their granddad, their real granddad. Like I say, I, mean, I only have a, um, I had Alf. Alf was a great granddad. Alf was a really good granddad, like. He loved his racing on a Saturday. Because we always used to go up there at the weekend, like, to see, um, my, um, to see my grandparents. But, but actually, my nana, like. Because my nana was dad's mother, like. But anyway, um, yeah, yeah, but I mean, um, dad, dad is the first real granddad of the Baileys, like, of our, of our, of our, but of this line, of our line, of this family line, Dad is the first, the only, the first Grandad Bailey, Grandpa Bailey. Dad is really the first Grandpa Bailey ever, really, uh, in, in our particular, in my particular branch of the, of the tree, sort of thing. Obviously, my dad's brothers are also grandparents, probably by now. So they're, they're Grandpa. In fact, Ted was probably the first Grandpa. No, I think, you know, Jackie was, I'm sorry, I'm, no, um, I don't know. I think Tom was the first born of the entire generation, wasn't he? I think Thomas was the first born of the entire gen of his entire generation, I think. Nineteen eighty eight. Yeah, I think he was the first born, I think. I don't know, Australian Jimmy, I don't know if he had his kids first. So we've got a cousin, Australian Jim. Like, because Ted's the older Ted was the head of the family sort of thing. He died a couple of years ago. Ted Uncle Ted died a couple of years ago. He was like the head of the family sort of thing. Of his generation. Because Dad's got three brothers, you see. And there's 
Ted was the oldest. Dad was the second. Is was is the second oldest. Then there's Lionel, and then there's uh, Bill, who's me, who's Patrick actually. Bill's actually Patrick, but everyone calls him Bill. So there's four. The, my dad's had three brothers. Uh, well, he's still got three brothers, but Ted died a couple of years ago. But Ted was the head of the family, sort of thing. For, but he was in Australia. He was the Australian head, really, because Dad was. So Dad was like the British head of the family, because Ted went to Australia. So Ted was like the Australian head of the family, and Dad was like the uh, British head of the family, sort of thing. <laughs> the Don. Dad was the Don of the family. Dad's always been the Don of the family, like the uh, uh, the, the head of the family, like. Grandpa, Grandpa Bailey. He was the first Grandpa Bailey. Dad's, Dad's actually the first Grandpa Bailey of our family. He's the first Grandpa Bailey. And he's actually the sort of like the Don of the family, the boss of the family sort of thing. But Donald Stuart Bailey also, is also my little brother. My younger brother Donald St is also Donald Stuart Bailey. So Donald Stuart Bailey is still Donald Stuart Bailey, you see. They've got the same heart. Dad and Donald have always had the same heart, you see. I think we've all got Dad's heart, really, and Mum's heart. Because Mum and Dad are so beautiful. My parents have always are so fucking beautiful. You wouldn't you know, can't imagine, but my dad was such a beautiful guy. I never even argued with my dad ever really. He did confiscate my LSD once because I did walk home stark naked one day in nineteen ninety one. I think it was because I took LSD in Australia. See, I came down. And I was staying. I was staying with my parents. I was living back at home with mum and dad, like in ninety one. You see, and I took a tab of LSD one night. Took a tab of LSD one night. And I walked stark bullock naked all the way to the forum, which you know the town centre and the well the Asda car park basically. I walked all the way to the Asda car park, stark bullock naked, in the middle of the night, because my parents were out, you see, and I was in my bedroom. I took a tab of LSD, and I thought I was red Indian. I walked all the way down to Asda car park, came back home, walked back home. Police sirens buzzing everywhere because I went. I, I walked to the forum as well. And I stark bullock naked, like it was ninety one, nineteen ninety one, and I was stark bullock naked in the middle of Hatfield town centre. Sort of thing, well, you know, at the club sort of thing. And anyway, so I walked home, start pulling naked, and I realised as I got to the door that I hadn't, I got, got, got home, got to the door, and, and I hadn't taken a key with me because I, I had no pockets because I was start pulling naked. And it was 91, and I knocked on the door, and my dad and mum answered the door. Can you believe that? Start, my dad knows everything about me, man. Pretty much a hell of a lot about me, anyway. Yeah. But I mean, it was not, in 1991, um, um, I, 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 I walked start bullet naked, the, the uh, form came back. I knocked on the door, start bullet naked, because I didn't have a key. And my mum and my dad answered the door. So there's my mum and dad standing at the door, you know, gazing at their 20, 25-year-old son. I was 25, wasn't I? In, 90, in 1991, I was about 25 years old then. He was about 25 years old in 91. Fucking that was a long time ago. Half a lifetime ago for me, actually. It was half a lifetime. But anyway, I knocked on the door, and my mum and dad answered the door. And my dad says, what the fuck have you taken? I said, I took a tab of LSD, Dad. 